Hello from Adventure Isle. Today we are here in London at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour and we're going to do all things Harry Potter and we're so excited to check it out and share it with you guys. So it's time for us to enter. Let's go. We have gone through security and gotten our ticket scanned and as we entered they gave us these little passports to celebrate the return of Azkaban which is the current celebration that they're doing here at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour in London. Welcome to Return to Azkaban, our celebration of fan favorite moments from Harry's third year at Hogwarts. Created for our special feature by head prop maker and his team, our giant time turner will take you back 20 years to the cinematic release of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. From the night bus and divination to Dementors and Bogarts, the studio tour is packed full of new sets, props, and costumes to explore. So this is the Frog Cafe, themed after a chocolate frog. Take a look at all these amazing desserts. Ice cream. And then you can also get soft serve ice cream and you can pick your house cone. And then right over to the side over there, that's where we're heading to do afternoon tea. It's with all the cool hanging candles. Our tour is actually not scheduled to start for a couple of hours. So what we did was before our tour officially starts, we booked a reservation to start by doing the Harry Potter afternoon tea. Hi. We have an afternoon tea reservation at 11.30. So, we're starting our studio tour by having a Harry Potter afternoon tea. And we're actually not big fans of tea, but you, we did want to try the food and the Harry Potter experience. But you can also get coffee or juice or water. You don't have to get tea. And you can also pay 15 pounds extra and add Prosecco. So we're starting with coffee. So that's what I got. Bailey, what did you get? I got an apple juice, but I might have a tea later. Yeah, so she might try tea, but she got apple juice and I got a latte. So that's what I'm starting out with. And the food is almost here, so we're very excited to try it. Okay, this menu looks incredible. It comes with afternoon tea, Molly Weasley sandwich selection, plus some savory bites, including a meat pie, and there's a whole back of the menu, which is where you get your sweet treats. And they're all Harry Potter themed. Okay, so here we go. These are the sweet treats here on top. Those are incredible. And then down here are the meat pies. And down here are the sandwiches. And everybody also gets scones. And we actually have four people, so we have double the amount of stuff I just showed you. There you go. So we're gonna start here with the sandwiches. Starting on the left, we have Wiltshire ham with grain, mustard, mayonnaise, and tomato bread. Next to that, the green sandwich is cucumber and cream cheese with dill and chives on spinach bread. Next to that, brown sandwich is chicken with cream curry mayonnaise on dark cocoa bread. And next to that is prawn and mayonnaise on lemon bread. So we're gonna start by trying those. So we tried all four sandwiches. Bailey wasn't a huge fan because they are some kind of interesting flavors. I did think the ham sandwich and the cucumber sandwiches were the best, so that's just my opinion. But so far, those are my favorite in the sandwich section of the tea tray. Next up, it's time for the savory bites. So over here, we have the Hogwarts meat pie, slow cooked beef brisket in a short, cut, short crust pastry with flaky puff pastry top, which is supposed to pay homage to the iconic Great Hall Feast. Next to that, we have the common room sausage roll, pulled ham hock, and feta sausage encased in a flaky pastry. A snack so British that it was eaten in the Gryffindor common room when the students celebrated Harry's triumph in the Triwizard Task. 
And then this last one here is the Scottish smoked salmon on beetroot, beetroot waffle. Delicate Scottish smoked salmon layered on a beetroot waffle adorned with velvety cream cheese and, sa and samphire. Inspired by the taste of the Highlands, Minerva McGonagall's homeland and the backdrop for Hogwarts Castle. So at the tea, I wanted some, some of a sweeter tea, so they gave me a fruit tea. So I'm, but if you want the fruit tea, you have to put this down and take it out of this, which it comes in, and then you have to pour the tea in it so that if you get leaves in your tea, you don't accidentally eat them. So this is a strainer that you can use. Okay, that's perfect. And now, put that back in the strainer. You want to put some sugar in it? Here, yeah. look, the sugar comes in this cute little cauldron. Okay, let's see. Okay. I'm gonna pour my own tea. Okay. Sorry, I meant put my own sugar. All right, and then let's let it cool down a bit because it was hot when it came out, okay? All right, fun, having tea. Okay, next up we're on to sweet treats. So here, starting on the left, we have the golden snitch. Unlike the first snitch Harry caught, you won't find the resurrection stone inside this one. Instead, our white chocolate snitch conceals a burst of luscious raspberry ganache. And then to the right of that, we have follow the butterflies, a chocolate sphere with a vibrant passion fruit caramel center adorned with a dark chocolate butterfly. We agree with Ron, butterflies are better than spiders. And then here we have Hagrid's pumpkin patch. Inspired by the larger than life pumpkins found inside Hagrid's hut, this pumpkin loaf is served on a bed of pecan crumb soil. And then here, this yellow macaron is Dumbledore Sherbert lemon macaron with candied lemon. Packed in the pockets of his robes or tucked away in the corner of his cluttered office, a stash of Sherbert lemons was never far away from the headmaster's reach. And then here, the last one, we have Lupin's chocolate macaron. Chocolate is known for its ability to conjure feelings of calmness and comfort. This indulgent chocolate macaron topped with a remedy Correction, Choc topped with a chocolate frog, evokes Lupin's preferred Dementor remedy. So that's very cute. I love the chocolate frog there. All of these desserts are really adorable, but I think especially the chocolate frog and these golden snitches. And then after this, we do have one more thing to try. We tried all five desserts. I thought they were all really good. The macarons were especially good, but my actual favorite thing on that plate was the little Hagrid pumpkin that had like pralines and it had buttercream. It was really good and really sweet. And that was my favorite dessert. Bailey, what was your favorite dessert? My favorite dessert was this candied lemon macaron. It was amazing and I ate almost all of it and I'm gonna eat the rest. Yes, obviously sugar was also her favorite part of the whole meal. I actually thought the whole thing overall was really good. We do have one thing left to try, and I saved that for last because it was honestly the thing I was most excited about, and that is that there is a butterbeer scone, and it comes with butterbeer cream and with some strawberry jam, so I'm gonna show that to you now, and then that's the last thing that we're trying here at the Harry Potter afternoon tea. Okay, next up and last we have this. I was so excited for this item. It came on its own cute little plate, so I just left it on that plate here. This is a butterbeer scone, a magical twist on the British scone infused with fudge pieces and the warmth and richness of the Wizarding World's favorite beverage accompanied with a butterbeer infused cream that you can see right there and a jam. Just by smelling it, it seems like a strawberry jam, so we're gonna try that. It looks amazing. Okay, so as expected, those butterbeer scones were absolutely incredible. The cream was delicious, the jam was delicious. She loves it so much. She's actually also eating another half of mine right now. <laughs> yes, scones were a big hit. Definitely, probably my favorite part of the whole meal that we had today. And also another cool fact, if you are coming here to visit, we did our tea earlier in the day, like 11.30 before we went on the studio tour. And they actually told us that you can box up your food and they'll put it in the fridge and keep it for you so you don't have to carry it around all day. So that is something really awesome that they will do here if you're coming here for afternoon tea. So we thought that was amazing. Anyway, we're now done here. It's time to go do the studio tour. And we had a great time. 
It's now one o'clock so we can enter for our official tour time slot and as you enter through this large tour entrance doorway you go into an area where there is a bunch of history and timelines about the Harry Potter movies and lots of cool stuff to look at while you wait to get to the actual entrance of the tour. all the years that the movies came out. First movie was in 2001. And this is the last movie in 2010. Well, then this is the movie video we are standing at the entrance of the castle itself, which means there's something rather special just behind these doors. And speaking of special, is anyone here celebrating a birthday, a special occasion? Come on up. Come on up. It's like a house. You're going to grab one of this door handle. Send a mask and a kiss and a kitchen. You're more the merrier. All the birthdays. Lovely. So with that, let me my up. Come let me greet you with the very words of Harry Potter when he arrived at the castle. Welcome to Hogwarts. Gently push the doors open, everyone. Perfect. Round the applause for our helpers. And to make your way in, and to the door, and to the great pool. It was one of the very first sets ever constructed for the film series, and as you can probably tell, one of the largest. So much so, we can actually fit 22 double-decker buses in here, which is the equivalent of just over 400 cast and crew members. So please do not stop in those doorways, keep making your way in, so we can lower that cinema screen and close those doors, making for a fantastic photo opportunity. Now the lights are low, the tables are dressed, and the fire is flickering, which means we're in a hot set. So if you haven't already, feel free to take your phones and cameras, take as many pictures and videos as they can hold. I'll give you a couple moments to really take in the music to set in, and we'll meet again at the top of welcome to to reveal some more movie making secrets. Of the frogs you see on the screen. 
Now, of course, your time in the Great Hall is slowly coming to an end, but before you leave, I'll give you some tips and tricks for the day ahead of you. If you have a digital guide, that's a device attached to a lanyard, the tour begins around the corner by our director's board, where you'll be looking for numbered icons detailing what chapters to listen along to. If you have a tour passport, that's a little booklet that says Return of Asperger on it, go on the lookout for 16 golden stitches and 7 stamping locations. Now I know that's a lot of information, so your first and only golden stitch in the Grey Hall is hanging the archways to the left. And your very first stamping location is by the Gryffindor Common Room, where you can also pick up any passports if you carry them. of in costume making, we'll actually find these elsewhere. So usually we'll make things specifically for the actor, like the dresses for example, those are specifically tailor-made, but shoes are a lot harder to make. So we actually find them, we make some slight alterations to them. So for this one we add like the interior like pattern, change the laces, add that pink trim on the outside, add in the colour for the logo and everything as well. And then we have loose dresses. Isn't that cool Billy? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. having a hard time hearing it. Do you want to see the jewelry? Yeah. 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 Okay. So this is all going to be stuff for Luna, except for down here we have the cufflinks for Gilderoy and Alcar, which I'm a little bit biased for. Something. But pretty much most of this stuff is actually handmade by Van Lynch. So, so this stuff is actually going to be pretty much made by the actress who plays Luna Lovegood. So one good example would be the, uh, the cork necklace. She actually made that before production took place, took it to the costume designers and like, would this be okay? The costume design was like, absolutely, that looks absolutely perfect. This is described in the book exactly like this. We've got other things like the radish earrings just up here. These are the earrings she wears alongside that silver dress for Christmas party. Oh, that's the one from the wedding. The yellow one. Yeah, the yellow one is from the wedding. The yellow one is from the wedding. Right. Yeah. 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 Very cool. All right, say thank you because I think some other people are doing a tour. Thank you so much.
Serena. When we originally booked our tickets, we did prepay for Bailey to do the broomstick experience, and this is how it turned out. Perfect, Ravenclaw. Well done. You've got to do a big smile at the camera. It's gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> he is pretty well behaved. Well, I'm watching the Goblin of Fire demonstration because we went for that finish, of course. And head on over here. I'm coming to join us next to the interior set of the night. This is the very first time we've ever had this at the studio tour. And it's just for our return to ask about the feature. Do come as your Alaska band, and one of the key seats was, of course, that's involving the night bus. To create the night bus itself, the special effects team led by special effects supervisor John Richardson used a real red London double decker bus, uh, chopped the top off, and then an additional layer before putting the top back on to create the triple decker bus, before, of course, paying to get the iconic purple colour. To make sure that it didn't topple over during the twists and turns of London, they created a stunt version. This was two tons heavier, so that the weight could count to balance the sheer height of the night bus, and it wouldn't have any trouble going round any of those corners. There was then a third and final version created, and we have that here today. This is the interior set of the night bus. It was placed on a moving gimbal, so that it can tilt and rotate, along with all of the rest of the erratic nature of the night bus's journey. It's all well and good me talking about it though, I think it's about time we see it. Now what I will say is if you spread out on the barrier, you will get the best view. Don't look at me, I am not interesting in comparison to this. Take it away, yeah? Yeah, take it away, yeah. It's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> now at the windows, at the back, you will be able to see some of the original footage of a London wizard by. It was originally added in post-production because the windows were blue screen during filming. What did you say you were this again? I didn't. Well, we're back to you, but you believe God, That's it, Mark. You made that, 
The leaky car gets in London. The leaky car gets in London. Hey, you need to have a piece of it. Make sure you eat it before it eats you. <laughs> I'm sure you noticed the chandelier swinging around at the beds were sliding. Well, the chandelier is powered by a pneumatic actuator, which essentially just means there is a compressed air pushing through so they can swing alive on set for you all to see. The beds were powered by an electronic actuator, but this was done differently during the filming, when the team actually used ropes to pull the beds up and down this set for any time that they needed to suddenly stop as they hit the beds. Ladies, so now we want to keep our eye out for her as she crosses all the way along the back of the bus. Here she is, and listen out for Lenny Henry. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, three and a half, two, one and three quarters. Yes! Now, the team actually had to shut down parts of London, including Palmer's Green, Borough Market, and Lambeth Bridge over several nights for filming. Mind your head. Guys, why the long faces? <laughs> now, to make sure that the bus could actually make its way all the way around London, they had a, the team had a crane on standby permanently overnight so they could lift the top layer back off the bus. They then double decker bus could go under the bridges and then the top layer could go back on to create a triple decker. And it could reach its final destination of the Lincoln Cauldron. So thank you very much for listening to me today. If you want to see some more special effects, there is one in our brand new Defence Against the Dark Arts classroom, just around the corner. And we do have our original night bus sat in the back of area when you get outside. Other than that, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the tour. The stairs are on the left, not the right, so we're in the mirror perspective, right? But the next time the wardrobe shakes, the camera shakes right there. That creates a big transition into the reality space. It's when Harry and Hermione go back in time to save Buckbeak and Sirius. So, when they turn back time, they run down the hospital wing corridor. We go past the pendulum, and we almost symbolise that we're travelling through time by travelling through the cops. And then we go through the glass, where we would see them run down the courtyard there. Enjoy the rest of the tour. Take out.
the studio to London, the making of Harry Potter during our return to Azkaban feature. My name is Megan and I'd love to share with you some behind the scenes insights into one of our newest sets, which has been constructed specifically for our return to Azkaban feature. I'm of course talking about the Defense Against the Dark Arts costume. Like much of the first Harry Potter film, the Dead Bites Against the Dark Arts costume was originally shot on location at Laycock Abbey in Butcher. Professor Quirrell's version of the classroom, which you can see on the screen just to my right hand side, looked very, very different to the version that you can see behind me. But as it is easier to film on a studio set than it is on location, a brand new Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom was constructed for Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets under the guidance of production designer Stuart Craig. Now, Stuart Craig set out to make this classroom stand out against the others, such as the Dingy Potions Dungeon or the Grand Stone Transfiguration classroom, while also carefully considering the geography of Hogwarts to allow us as the fans to explore the castle alongside the Golden Trio. I'm sure you can very easily tell that right now we are currently in the attic space of the Hogwarts with the help of the timber beams that are above your heads. Well, I say timber, it may surprise you to know that actually those have been cleverly constructed using an expanding foam, which makes them a lot lighter and more cost-effective for filmmakers. In order to bring this set to the tour, we actually brought back together the original Harry Potter filmmaking team. So this set is painstakingly accurate to the original. Art director Gary Tompkins told us that he trawled through their archive of 8,000 working drawings so that every door, every window, and every piece of panelling is exactly how it was on the original set. The team even managed to source some original elements for you to see today, such as the stairs and pulpit leading up to the teacher's office, and of course, the infamous bog of wardrobe. You'll also notice we've got some very special costumes on display here today, including David Dumas's Professor Lupin robes and Alan Rickman's Boggart costume. Now, a theme that ran continuously throughout the Harry Potter films was authenticity. The team always tried to get genuine reactions out of the young actors. And one of my favourite facts is that the laughter on set during the Boggart scene is actually completely genuine because the kids have never seen Alan Rickman in that costume until he stepped out of the wardrobe. Now, I'm sure you can all agree that while beautiful, the wardrobe does also look quite threatening. And it was designed that way through the juxtaposition of the soft languishing Art Nouveau lines and the sharp edges that we can see on the top of the wardrobe. You may remember that when we first see the wardrobe, we see it with the students' reflections inside and it's rattling menacingly. The shot then pushes in until we, as the audience, travel through the glass into the mirror image with the rest of the scene then plays out. You may also have noticed that thanks to some clever camera work, as we pass through the wardrobe and it begins to shake, we shake too. Alfonso Caron, who is the director of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, was famously a very big fan of these travelling through glass shots. You may recall that we see that cinematic technique used several other times throughout the film, including when we pass through the glass face of the clock tower, and we narrowly miss the ticking clock hands and swinging pendulum that you saw earlier on in your tour today. Now, while most of the magic of this scene was created using visual effects, such as the roller skating spider or the moon balloon effect, there was one special event that was rigged to live on set just as we have it here today. That made it a more authentic experience, not only for the young actors, but also for us watching as the audience as well. The special effects team, led by John Richardson, rigged pneumatic rams underneath the wardrobe to create that ominous shaking effect. They also created a device that would click the door handle open and added a second pneumatic ram to allow the door to open and close. And while there are no boggarts to vanish today, there is no harm in practicing. So I'm going to hand you all over to Professor Lubin and get those ones at the ready, everybody.
have seen the wardrobe in action. We have plenty more special effects around the tour for you to see. So have a great rest of your day exploring Richmond. To ask for that. show it to you in just a second and then we'll take a little break and then we'll continue with the other half of the tour okay so this is the butterbeer flight you get regular butterbeer plus a butterbeer cupcake and you also get butterbeer ice cream Baylor are you excited to try that yeah which one do you want the most ice cream 
So I'm gonna set this down and so here at the Backlot Cafe, we did get the flight, which we just showed you. We actually ended up with two of those, and they were really good. My favorite is still the regular butter beer, but the cupcake and the ice cream were good. They were just really sweet. And then I also tried the butter beer latte, which was like a special item from today. Has little butter beer pieces on top, and that was really good. Also, I've had a couple sips of that. And then you can also get food here. So we did also grab these. Um, these are the like barbecue loaded fries. We've had a little bit of them, but you can see there's like coleslaw and fries and meat. And they're really good. Um, they're a pretty big portion for what we paid, which I think was like maybe 10 pounds, so like 12 or 13 American dollars. But overall, it was a cute place to stop and they did have food and drink and lots of treat options, especially butter beer flavored treats. So a good place to stop and take a break here while we wait to go into the next part of the tour. And when you're done at the Backlot Cafe, you can walk out here to some incredible sights from Harry Potter. Look at that, it's the burrow. Yeah, obviously a miniature version of the burrow. That's very cool. It's a lot of very cool Harry Potter quotes on the walls. And over here, you can actually now go inside number four, Privet Drive. So we'll do that in just a few minutes. Here's the beautiful night bus. There's the greenhouse. And here is the Hogwarts Courtyard Fountain. Very cool. And then lastly, out here just past the bridge, there's some photo ops. So there is the car. And Hagrid's motorcycle. So now we're going to go wait in line to go inside Privet Drive and see what they have set up inside. <laughs> Look, is there a letter in there, Bailey? Yes. Drunk too, no doubt. That's a lie. What did you say? My dad wasn't a drunk. I think it's time you went to bed. Quiet, Vernon. You clean it up. Cool. I love your skirt. Very good. Thank you. I think we just go this way, Bailey. Grandma looks like she should be going in there with her bow truckle. Show me your bow truckle, Grandma. Look 
how cute it is. The Hogwarts greenhouse for herbology class. How oh, cute, they're all wearing their mandrake ears. Yeah, you can try to pull one out when we're close. Okay, you can't pull the young mandrakes. You can't pull the young mandrakes, but when we get to the big mandrakes, you can have a turn pulling. Oh, there's lots of mandrakes. <laughs> Look at that. Can you pull that out again, Bailey, so I can see it? Look at his face. That's so cool. Can you pull it up so I can take a picture of you with it? Can you pull it up and turn around? Do you remember who Bathilda Bagshot is, Bailey? Yeah. You know who that is, Mom? That's the one from the house. Yeah, the, the, sn the snake comes out of her. Animatronic. It was so people could be his stunt double, they built an animatronic of Hagrid. And then over here is Lupin as a werewolf. Scabbers. And look, did you see over here? There's the Hungarian horntail dragon and a Thestral, Bailey. And look who that is Dobby. There's the
the mandrakes we just saw in the greenhouse. But that one Here, look. to keep itself. Is that the new book? Hey, do you want to pretend to be Dobby? Next. Look, you can make Dobby do your motions. You can be next. Okay, then I go be Dobby over there. Just move your arms. Okay, Haley, let's let somebody else have a turn. All right, Bailey. one by one. To make a set of goblin eyebrows takes about a day. Depends if you're making a fishy eyebrow, wiry eyebrow, longer eyebrow. Are these full scales? Yeah, they were little. You know, goblins are shorter than... No, is that a full scale version? Yeah. That's Flitwick. He's tiny. Oh, Green Gods. Bailey, somewhere in here is where you get your stamp. The doorknobs from Gringotts. But then look what's in here. Actual Gringotts. Yes.
That's so cool. Look at all the banks. other goblins. See, this is the scene after the dragon destroys the bank. And the other scene we were just in was the bank before they go down. That's why they have all the costumes and stuff.
This model is especially cool because the Hogwarts castle actually goes from daytime to nighttime and there's a bunch of lighting effects and there's actually a little show.
You want to get down under the black light and see? And of course, before we head out for the day, we do want to show you all of the Harry Potter merchandise that's available. So let's take a look around the store, which also has very cool theming.
thanks so much for watching our day here at Warner Bros. Studio Tour. And make sure, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. Bye!